Hello, and welcome to the Officials Institute, where we combine rules talk with video instruction for every official. Up next, the jump ball. This is Rule Review. Hello everyone, and thanks for joining us for another segment of Rule Review. Before we get started, please find and click the subscribe button and join us in a community of officials, knowing that even though we may never call a perfect game, every play we see gets us one step closer. Also, if you want to be notified every time we upload new videos, find and click the bell notification button. Subscribe today and let's get better together. Now, back to our rule review topic, the jump ball. The jump ball is not a popular topic to cover. Maybe it's because we only see it once a game, hopefully. Or maybe it's because it's a very mundane and routine part of the game and seems to be over as quick as it starts. But the jump ball is extremely important because if done properly or improperly, it can set the tone of the whole game. If you are expecting the same usual outcome of your jump ball every game, then you will most definitely be surprised or even unaware when anything out of the ordinary does happen. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about the jump ball. Roll those clips. In our first clip, we see the referee enter the restraining circle, toss the ball up, and move into position to start the game, with White in possession in their backcourt. Let's take a closer look and talk about what happened. But first, let's discuss the responsibilities of each official. Let's start with the referee. According to the National Federation Officials Manual, to begin play using the jump ball method, the referee, or designated tosser, after tossing the ball in the air, is primarily responsible for the action of the jumpers and after control has been established, the referee must also ensure the alternating possession arrow is set in the proper direction. The umpire 1 must focus on the tossed ball and be responsible for ruling on whether it is legal or not, including any violations or calling back a bad toss. The umpire 2's primary responsibility is to watch for the position and action of the eight non-jumpers, and more specifically, in relation to the center restraining circle. With that said, the first observation we have is where he starts his toss. When throwing the ball up, it is important we do not start with the ball too low. This is because we want to avoid the jumpers from being able to time out the toss. If one player is able to time out the toss by a slow and deliberate start, an unfair advantage is gained. So start up higher and wait for a brief moment to keep the jumpers unaware of when the start will begin. The second observation has two parts. First, the ball needs to be tossed slightly higher than both jumpers can jump. So, as the rule states, it will drop between them. But why is this? This is because neither jumper is allowed to touch the ball before it reaches its highest point which leads to part two of this observation. When the jumper on the home team touches the ball, it has yet to reach its highest point. Again, because it has not yet started downward, dropping between them. Because of this action, a jump ball violation has occurred, and a whistle should be blown by the umpire one to stop play, as this is U1's primary responsibility. The last observation to make on this clip is what the referee does after the ball has been obtained by the home team. As you can see here, because the official hurries through these players, his back is to the action behind him, leaving this matchup, and possibly even this one, unobserved completely by the entire crew. After the direction of the ball is established after a jump ball, instead of hurrying through the players to get into position, hold your spot and move slowly into position. Let's watch this one again.
In our next clip, we see another jump ball to start the game, this time with the referee using a two-hand method to toss the ball. And once again, after the ball is controlled, he moves into position to resume his primary coverage area. But was this a legal jump? When slowing things down and examining further, we see that the official is ready to toss the ball, but before it leaves his hands, number three white begins to move and changes his position around the center restraining circle, which, for all non-jumpers, is 36 inches deep. Since this movement around the restraining circle happened before the ball was tossed, according to Rule 6.2, it is an illegal action and should be ruled a violation by the umpire too, as this is the primary responsibility of you too. Also, please note once again, the tossing official should hold their position and move slowly into their succeeding primary coverage area. By slowing down, we reduce the chance of running into or getting in the way of any players yet to move past us. Let's watch this one again. In our next clip, we see the ball get tossed in the air with both jumpers touching the ball several times, and ending with one of the jumpers grabbing and holding the ball before it touches any of the non-jumpers and causing a violation. But was it? Let's examine closer. As you can see, after the ball reaches its highest point, it is touched once by both jumpers in the air, and then after they return to the ground, blue 12 touches the ball with both hands simultaneously a second time with the ball then falling to the ground. Since the jump ball restrictions end once the ball touches the floor, when blue 12 catches and holds the ball when it bounces up toward him, it cannot be ruled a violation. This is a legal play. Let's watch this one last time. In our last jump ball clip, we have another great toss thrown just high enough to be slightly out of reach of the jumpers, and resulting in the visiting team player out jumping his opponent and tapping the ball successfully to a teammate to start the game. However, when we zoom in closer, we see the reason the jumper of the visiting team was able to outleap his opponent was because he grabbed his arm and held him from jumping and reaching any further. This is a foul. Since the primary responsibility of the tossing official is the action of the jumpers, the referee needs to bring his focus down off the flight of the ball and more onto the bodies of the jumpers. Only then can this illegal hold be caught and called properly. If there is a whistle on this play, the game would start with a throw-in at the division line for the home team, and since no alternating possession arrow has yet been established, once the ball is placed at the disposal of the throw-in team, the direction of the arrow would be set toward the opponent's basket. Let's watch that one one more time. There you have it. That's our segment on the jump ball. Hopefully the next game you're scheduled to work will start as routinely as possible. But if it doesn't, I'm sure now you're better prepared to recognize and call any illegal activity that may happen. Once again, before you go, please click that link above and subscribe to this channel. And make sure you share this video with someone you know, because the more people we can reach, the better the game will get. Until we see you again, have a good game.